welcome to the channel built by Ben. Now today, I'm just coming away from the job, I've already done it, but I'm taking the video today for you lot to watch. Um, it's an absolute nightmare job for me because it's cost me so much money in the end for something that wasn't my fault. Um, what we've done is we've gone there previously and fitted some softwood doors um, onto the front of the garage for someone uh, and over time they've just cut, they've twisted, they've shrunk, they've done everything they can do and it's just made the doors unusable um, which I'll show you again in a minute. Um, I suppose what I want to say in this video is that I made two mistakes. Number one was to use softwood because softwood is just no good anymore in my eyes. I'll never use softwood outdoors again. Um, I think the only application it's good for these days is just indoor stuff and sometimes it still warps and shrinks in when you get your heating on and I don't know I think it's becoming a bit of a, a bit of a rubbish material. Um, second mistake I made was just being too helpful. This old guy and his missus they just wanted these garage doors done but they didn't have a lot of money. Um, and at that point I should have just gone sorry it's not for me but I said okay well we'll use the existing braces on the back of the door and put some new tongue and groove boarding on the front to make it look new and looking back that was a, a huge mistake of mine because I you know it wasn't really strong enough you know all of it was all like the frame was all different levels, none of it was straight, none of it was nice, so I should have just said you either need a new frame and set of proper joinery made doors or you can't afford to have new doors on. Sorry, you know, you have to go elsewhere. So yeah, obviously I've had to then go back to the joinery and say that all your wood's all cut and bent and sent them some photos and luckily the joinery firm then provided me with the hardwood to go and change it all um, but what I had to do the first time I went back there was to put some metal braces on the back of the doors um, to try and straighten them back out and make them usable again but obviously it wasn't enough of a fix um, once the wood continued to then bend so I've gone back once with some metal work I think that cost me 60 quid as well so I'm already sort of 260 quid down after a day rate and then I've gone back again today spent the whole day there again so you know 460 quid down on a job that only cost 800 pound in the first place that's all my profit gone plus a bit more you know it's just one of them things not not worth me doing at all but I can't have bad work to my name, especially in a place like that, that because it was a cul-de-sac and plenty of eyes on it, you know, you, you can't have your van parked there all day doing work and then it looks absolutely rubbish a few weeks later. So yeah, enjoy the footage, um, I've just filmed it in a bit of a time lapse again because I can't, some jobs I just haven't got the time to present the job as well. I have to just crack on with it, get it done. Obviously when I'm there earning no money, I don't want to hang around. So um, enjoy the footage. If you like what you see, then like the channel, subscribe to the channel as well. Don't forget to ring the bell so that you get notified when I post new videos. And uh, most importantly, tell your mates about it. Cheers. You can see the state of them. Look how much that kim timbers look how much that timbers curled there. We've got these joins that just pulled right apart off of the glue. All four really. Another one there. And no fault of the fitting at all. It's the fitter that's got to make it right. So we've got a bunch of hardwood on the top of the van now. We're going to replace the lot. 
Okay, so we're just going to start taking apart the old doors here. Get the metal straps off of the back of that one. The ones that I told you I'd put on at the beginning of the video. And then we're just going to bench this door. Start ripping the thing apart. Get all of that softwood off of there. You only want to take about half to two thirds of the ones off for now on something like this because you don't want to lose the shape of it. So then three or four balls that I've left on there will just keep it all solid and sand all of the old glue off of the base of the timber there and then we can start putting some of the new hardwood on. I'm using a second fixed Paslo gun now with some 36mm pins in. There's a 16mm board that I've got thickness wise um, and all we're doing is we're going in with the pins at a 45 degree angle um, so they're less likely to pull out then. If, uh, if you go in at a 45 degree angle opposite to each other it's always a bit better for pull out reasons. I'll do a separate video on that at some point so that I can explain what I mean by that. And once we've got enough of them pinned in, we're just going to take the rest of them boards off. Make sure everything's sound and give that a sand down as well. And we'll get the rest of them hardwood boards on now. Just uh, marking that one up there. Just cut the groove off of it by the look of that. Just sand it down a bit. Don't like to leave a tongue or a groove on the edge of a gate, something that you're doing like this. Just leave a nice square edge. Sand it down so it's not sharp. And because we know what the size that we were going to because of the old doors, it didn't really take much shooting in. We'll get this one screwed in with two of them screws in each hinge for now. Because if you ever need to move these type of hinges, you can move the door slightly and then just reposition the screws. So um, it's a handy little tip. Also with these type of hinges, with these T-bar hinges, uh, they've got quite a lot of play in the actual knuckle of the hinge. So a good little tip there again with a heavy door like this is just to spring them down a little bit before you put the screw in. And then obviously the tension that it's got there because you pulled it down then helps to lift the weight of the gate upwards again so that's also a nice little tip so again we're just taking apart this other gate or door and uh, sanding all the glue off again and then we just start the process again Okay, so we just offer up that second door there. See how that fits in place. We had a little bit of adjustment to do on that one, so we just bring it back off. That was slightly out of square, that flame frame, so we'll um, take it off and cut a rake up to one side of it. Get that refitted.
and then you can slightly adjust your other door leaf there to match that one. And then once you know you're right, we'll just bang the rest of them screws in, make sure both doors are swinging nicely, not hitting each other. And that's the doors done. So we can now concentrate on that surround. It took ages to get this old surround off because I'd fitted it never to come off, obviously, on my last visit. So we had loads of screws to grind, we had loads of bits to do on that just to get them off. finally got that released and then the rest of it become a lot easier. You want to keep all of your old bits in this situation because they obviously act as a template for all of the new bits that you've got to cut. If you just chuck all of that old stuff away or break it up or cut it up then obviously you haven't got your template to get your new stuff back on so anyway we've got everything off I'm just um, rebating those bits over the hinges. We had to cut the hinge bits out there because of the way the frame was built originally. This is the only way that I could think of making everything look nice and dressing it up. So that cover plate just went on the left hand side with the hinge recesses in the back of it just to go over the knuckle really. And then we've just got the uh, shaped bit at the top done. That's what you can see me doing on the bench there. Again, just having a rough measure because it had warped so much. You could barely use it as a template, but between sort of roughly measuring it and using that as a template, we got the shape that we wanted. Just get that in there, make sure it fits and take it back down. Glue the whole thing together. few little adjustments. You can just give it his final cut. Try that up there again, make sure that all fits nicely. Looks good, sorry, this is where I then take it all down to glue it up again. A little router out of there to miss a metal post that's inside. Then we get it up for good and pin it in place, making sure that it doesn't bind on the doors at all. And that's the shape part done. So we're now concentrating on the barge board that goes along the top there. It's a bit tricky doing that one by myself, but. You have to do these things as a solo carpenter. You have to learn different ways of making it easier for yourself. And sometimes you've just got to whack a pin in it to do the, do the job of the second man. But if you've got to do that, then you've got to do it. Then I was just using a bit of scrap there to use as a capping plate that then runs onto the felt roof. It's never a bad idea. And once that's all painted up, that'll work just as well. Just bridges that little gap at the back there so that you don't get any water come right down sitting on the top of the door, sitting on the top of the barge board. You just want to get rid of everything that ends up up there. Let me just do that bit on the right hand side there. Then we just had a little bit of fiddling around getting them uh, metal braces on the back. I decided just to pop them back on as I'd already paid for them and they they do a certain amount of strengthening up to the doors as well, keeping them nice and straight. So I decided just to whack them back on. 
Then we fiddled around with locks and everything as well, just made sure that the guy was happy that all of his locks worked properly. Got the metal bracing back on the second door as well there. Not the prettiest things in the world, but like I said, strength wise, they do wonders for the gates, especially these gates, because they were quite weak, so. I'll leave you with the rest. Right, so there we go, there's the finished doors. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Keep tuning in, like and subscribe to the channel. Cheers for watching.